Hey guys, Jacob here from Delta Logic, and today I want to show you how to handle reports from Amazon SPA API. We'll be talking about retrieving our own Amazon inventory. For example, items that we sold in the past or we are currently selling, listings which are active, which are inactive. And then later on, we'll be saving this inventory to the file. And later on, we'll be iterating over that and checking the sales that we did with the different ASINs on different marketplaces. And also, I'll show you how to easily display the data on the charts and of course, this is just a simple automation that you can do using Amazon SP API. So right now we are on a documentation and the API that we'll be using, it's a reports API here. And whenever you are there, you can also click here and read about it. So uh, I'll give you more details in a moment about the request and so on. Before we jump to that, I just want to mention that if you are a seller and if you struggle to migrate your old MWS application to the new SP API, we in a Delta Logic, we can help you with that. Just go to the description and go to our website, fill the form, and I will be happy to talk with you about your project. All right, let's jump to automation that we'll be doing today. So first of all, let's install the library that we'll be using with Python and the library. We already used that multiple times in the different videos. So also, if you struggle to uh, register as a seller private application, I have a video for that uh, that you can watch on my YouTube channel. And also, if you struggle, we do it as a service in Delta Logic. Let's install it. I'm using pipenv to install the virtual environment. All right, now it's done. It's activated. Let's create the short script that will be building today and let's use our favorite code editor in my case it's a PyCharm and in the PyCharm you simply need to uh, provide the path to your vnv you can do it also here uh, using this command this will give you the current direction directory to your environment all right this we can close just run our terminal also here as you see, we are running. We have our pip file, pip and log. We can just write the logic. Okay, so first of all, we want to make sure we have a, uh, credentials uh, for which are basically necessary to connect to the API itself. And here I already put the credentials. Of course, I will change them in a moment, but just that you know, this is the format of the credentials that we have. So we have refresh token, LW, a app ID and so on. And now I'll put them as strings, of course. Okay, so this is our client config and now we can just import it here. So, all right, so for the video as well, we'll need to import our libraries and create one directory. So let's create the directory right now here mkdir and we do responses we'll have our report stored here in this directory now we'll just import a couple of libraries they will be using that i will describe you later so first of all we need to get the report which will give us the inventory and the one that i was talking about is called here you go to the reports and what's the most important for you are the values of the reports. So here report types values and here you can actually see different kind of reports that you can also manually retrieve from the seller central. Um, but here, as you see, uh, this one is actually get FBA all inventory data for FBA sellers only. This also include the one of the, the, the listings which are not currently active. Basically they are archived, but we also want them because we want the list of all of the listings that we had also in the past. So you see here that this will give us back the data um, and we can request the report itself. It's a lot of data. So we had to first uh, basically request the report. Then uh, once we have the requested report, it needs a couple of seconds to be processed and then afterwards we request it again and we get the back the link to the actual report. I will, I will show you of course in the code in a moment. Okay. 
So first we declare the variable responsible for this report FBA that we just covered. Then we are, are running the reports API and running the function create the re create report, the most basic function basically um, with this report type. And as you see, uh, we requested the report here, and this is our ID that I'll right now take manually. But obviously when we run the script, we'll also take this. So I'll just put it here. But obviously for the script itself, we can just retrieve it. So normally we would do report ID is equal to report ID. But I'll just hover it. All right, now we can comment this out. We have our report ID. Now uh, let's get it. All right, so I will now describe all of that that we just coded. So first of all, we have our report ID. Um, we'll be using again the reports API, obviously, now to get the data. So we are first requesting this uh, report with this ID. Normally, we would obviously start here. And now we need to process it. So this is a while loop. And um, if the Order is still processing by Amazon API, right? But the, by the cloud. So it's not done, it's not fatal, it's not canceled. We will display it, we'll sleep for two seconds and we'll re request it again. And obviously, if it's at some different status, so, uh, so I mean, if this has uh, one of those statuses, we'll break the loop and we'll have the fresh data. And now, of this data, the payload of the data um, has fatal or a cancelled status for some reason it, it's failed it, it's failed otherwise which will most likely to happen it's a success we'll display this data payload and we'll get the actual document i'll show you in a moment how this looks before it and then how it looks afterwards so let's run it i forgot that it's a dictionary <laughs> so we need to do it like that but um, just to show you, this is uh, the success here, data, data payload. So that's the data payload. We have repo type, processing status, marketplace, all of the basically important thing. But what we care the most is a report document ID, because now once we have it, we'll ask for it. So let's, let's do it again here. Now, yeah, we got it right away and now we requested the document and here is the document. We have the URL and the URL will be valid only for a couple of uh, seconds, or maybe not seconds, but minute. So we have to get it right away. Otherwise we have to request the new um, link. So let's go back. All right, so uh, I just run it and now just to show you basically what's uh, what we got. So first of all, we got this um, content like this. So that's why we had to decode it. And once it's decoded, basically it looks like this, which is pretty, pretty nice. And now what I want to do is I want to save it uh, in a nice uh, format in a dictionary. All right, so here I just iterated over it to extract all of the necessary information so we don't have to really go in details, but the most important thing is, yeah, we have the SKU, ASIN, uh, condition, price. Uh, and yeah, I, uh, I have a list of uh, those dictionaries and I'll just add them um, here uh, to the file. So let's run it one more time. And now, 
going here the responses will have a nice dictionary that you can uh, see all right so that was the first part of this video and we covered how to get the report downloaded on your machine also formatted nicely in a json file and now we will actually do something with this data just before we jump to the next stage um, here is the short description of the services that we do at delta logic so if you want to work with us just send us the email at our form and yeah let's continue with the video all right so let's continue it's actually next day for me but yeah i had to, i had to do a break uh, let's continue and let's use the sales api uh, for our asins so here we have a sales api let's actually go here let's check it out and uh, the API that we'll be using is get order metrics. As you see here, it returns aggregated order metrics for given interval broken down by granality for given by a type. All right. And what we can also do with it is we can just filter it through ASIN. So right now I have a couple of ASINs basically from, from the data uh, and we'll be working with them. We'll be retrieving the data from each ASIN and then later on aggregating it, checking uh, different marketplaces and putting them visually on a graph. So let's do it right now. All right, so here we have a script which just reads our JSON file and just retrieves the ASIN because those are the one that uh, we care at this moment. Let's check it out. For those ASINs, let's see what are the sales metrics, mm, sales order metrics, right? For this time, uh, with total granulability, yeah, let's just run it. For some of them, we obviously have zero because, as you know, we retrieve the ASINs, uh, which are also inactive and so on. But for some of them, we have pretty nice metrics. And yeah, let's uh, right now basically write a script which will nicely represent our data for the graph. So let's say that we also sell on the multiple marketplaces and we want to um, aggregate basically a little bit our data, check uh, how we do for each ASIN on a different marketplace. And yeah, let's do it right now. out this functionality so basically we'll be iterating over two marketplaces us and canada uh, so for each asin we'll basically do a request uh, about the sales metrics or the metrics um, on each marketplace and we'll have it here so let's uh, run it right now um yeah, let's do python script all right so as you see here uh, for each country of different metrics. Uh, obviously, it's not that easy to have the account uh, to show you where I do sales on both market <laughs> places, um, but basically this is how it looks like. And now let's put it on a graph to pretty much visualize it uh, in a nice way. Visualizing, we'll use pretty nice library basically uh, called Seaborn. Those are basically a graphs, but in a nice way. I'll just show you pretty quick how this looks like. So here you have a nice overview and you can basically check here for each graph. You also have um, a nice code example and this is pretty much, for example, this one that we are using. Uh, so let's run it right now for our data. All right, we get some error. I mean, first of all, we get our table and then very nice format of the data frame. But now let me just double check where is the error. All right, we get the error there. It doesn't matter right now why. Um, I feel like it might be also re relevant to the pie term. But uh, I also run it in a Jupyter notebook and it's basically pretty much uh, also a Python environment where you can run your code in the cells. So this is the end result. So as you see here, um, basically, uh, we have a nice graph and we have the orders amounts for each ISIN on a different marketplace. So we can pretty much in a very quick way uh, see uh, what are the sales on each marketplace uh, to do our decisions. So that's pretty much just a example of the automation 
that we can build a Delta Logic for you as an Amazon seller. So yeah, pretty much that's it for today. Whenever you have some questions, some problem uh, with the Amazon SP API or the old MWS, feel free to reach out. We are here to help you. Uh, simply go to uh, deltalogic.com, fill the form or write us directly. And then afterwards, uh, me or someone from my team will get on a call with you to identify the project scope, ask you some questions. After the call, we'll do our work uh, internally and we'll get back to you with the offer. Hopefully, we'll work together. Um, and again, guys, uh, we are getting closer to the final migration. So the old MWS uh, API won't be available after December 31st. 2023. However, they will also uh, disable those functionalities which are super crucial um, on July 31st. So feel free to reach out to us and we are here to help you. Thanks a lot for watching guys and see you next time.